Hi there. Um, I'm really glad to be here to present for uh, World Clone Day. My name is Steve Piercy, and um, I am the lead cat herder for the documentation for Plone 6. Um, and I, my talk will be about uh, where documentation was, where it is now, and where it's headed. So uh, with that, we can get started. Um, first, um, we have a lot of, we have a lot of, uh, we had a lot of different uh, sources for documentation. There's um, docs.plone.org, uh, training.plone.org, and uh, even the uh, projects that are underneath the Plone umbrella had their own documentation. Uh, Volto had its separate documentation. Um, and Plone, uh, I think it was uh, Plone API and REST API also had separate docs. Um, and some of them were included in the main documentation. Uh, and that really led to a poor um, a developer experience, having to go from one set of documentation to another to get a complete picture. Um, and with Plone 6, we want to start, we want to, you know, resolve that and make sure it's easy for everybody to use documentation. So um, we started this effort um, with the training documentation. That was the easiest one to get going. Um, and so in uh, prior to Plone Conf of 2021, uh, there were discussions amongst myself, uh, Katya Seuss, Philip Bauer, Kim Paulson, myself, and many, many others about what were the problems with the current Plone training documentation. Um, and we came up with that the theme was outdated. It was using the um, standard layout that comes with uh, Read the Docs, which is the Read the Docs theme. And it had a fixed center column width. Uh, even though it did have a responsive layout, it wasn't you know, responsive first. Um, Volta developers like and other JavaScript developers prefer to use uh, Markdown. And a lot of other developers prefer to use Markdown. And being forced to use restructured text was painful. Um, there was no continuous integration or uh, continuous delivery. So we had to rely on uh, one person to deploy documentation, and that wasn't fun. Um, the structure of the documentation and uh, plon training was uh, too deeply nested, and there was some old content that was no longer relevant. Um, and so we made it more organized uh, and uh, removed a lot of the link rot that existed. Uh, there were links that went to things that no longer exist. And so the good old internet archive became our best friend. Um, we also noticed that training was becoming the de facto documentation for Plone uh, 6 uh, because there was no Plone 6 uh, version. In fact, as you can see, it only goes up to five. And that was bad. So <laughs> um, with people wanting to use Plone 6, they had no way of finding out how to get documentation for that other than going to Plone training. Um, so with all these problems, what did we do? Well, the first step was to come up with uh, a, a platform that we could all agree upon. And as we know, uh, developers have strong opinions about the tools that they use. And uh, for uh, restructured text, um, which tends to be preferred by Python developers, um, we, we notice that there's some really unique features that we don't want to lose. We have cross-references with automatic heading generation. Um, we have a glossary where we have um, all the terms uh, all the terms listed and defined, and you can create links to those within your narrative text. Automatic index generation. Um, so at the end of your documentation, you can have a, uh, a list of topics that are indexed, and you can click those links to go to them. Uh, tables of contents. Um, so we have, you know, here's your table of contents, kind of like what you see on the screen now. 
and um, the rich ecosystem that comes with Sphinx extensions, including Autodoc and Auto Summary, where your uh, methods and classes in Python are automatically documented for you, uh, pulling in doc strings and having them rendered, InterSphinx so that you can link between two entirely separate sets of documentation um, without having to know the link. You can actually uh, use cross-referencing for that, and a bunch of other things, um, even some that were developed by clone developers, such as HTTP example, uh, and we'll show some of that in just a minute. Meanwhile, Markdown also has its unique set of features. It's just easier to write, especially for headings, links, image syntax, formatting, writing code blocks. It's just, it, it really does have a, a lot of strengths and it tends to be favored by JavaScript developers. So with all that, we decided that we could get all of these together in one part package. Um, that package is called MIST. Uh, MIST is um, basically, it's a, it's a rich and extensible flavor of Markdown, uh, Recom and Mark, but more than that. Um, and it's, uh, it also includes the ability to use restructured text. Um, and so you get the boast, bo best of both worlds. And um, I heard about this through uh, Paul Everett. Some of you may know him. And he had a conversation uh, with uh, the developer of, of MIST. And I also saw another presentation from uh, Michael Kennedy of uh, Talk Python to me. Uh, I would really recommend you take a look at those to learn more about MIST. It's an amazing, um, it's an amazing tool, and it actually makes writing documentation fun again um, because there's new things to learn. So um, I, I, that's the platform that we chose. Um, so this, what's really great about it too, is that now you don't have to choose to write in restructured text only or Markdown only. You can write uh, your documentation using Markdown all you want and then season it with a few bits of restructured text. How cool is that? So um, with that, we came up with the uh, training documentation. Uh, and this is how it now looks. Oops, we should go to one of those things. Oops, wrong one. Sorry about that. And now we have a new theme that is very, very clean. Uh, we have this beautiful layout um, with some of it customized. Thank you, Katya, for that. Um, and it has easy to navigate sections so that you have all these trainings that you can go through um, and find them. We have a glossary. Here's all the terms that were combined and now have their definitions. We have a clear way of how to contribute to trainings. Uh, we have some resources for teachers as well. Um, one of the cool things too about this theme is that uh, we have a way to show and hide menus. We have sub menus so that as you scroll, it also shows where you are on the page. Um, we have the ability to go to full screen, in and out. That's great for presenters. We also have links to the source repository, how to open an issue, how to suggest an edit or to simply download the source files or a PDF of this. Um, there's a lot of really rich stuff in here. Um, maybe I can find an example of code blocks. Uh, so here we go, here's a code walkthrough. Uh, let's go to next. And here, so here's an example of code. We can just copy it. That's really a nice feature. Um, and we could paste that into our code or into our terminal and start working. Um, so yeah, there's a real, there's a huge a number of uh, fun things in here and I encourage you to check out train. So with that, 
Um, it was about in January where we um, came around to realizing, hey, we are stalled on Plone 6 documentation and really need to do something about it. Um, so we decided to apply all of that, all of the lessons that we learned from uh, the training documentation to Plone 6 documentation. Um, so first, uh, we decided on the platform of using Sphinx with Mist. Um, we decided to use the Sphinx book theme. That is the theme that you see applied here. Uh, more information about it is also available here. It's a beautiful theme. Um, you can do the kitchen sink <laughs> of all the things that you can do, even math. Isn't that cool? Uh, and some nice highlights, sidebars. I mean, who wouldn't want this? This comes out of the box and it looks beautiful on wide screens. A um, little bit of overflow problems in, in topics and tables, but eh, that's okay. API documentation also looks beautiful. You can go to source code. Um, we'll probably clean up a few things. And uh, here's some definition lists and tables. So all the features that you get in restructured text and markdown are all included. Isn't that awesome? Oh, I love that. Look at that. You can have full width header or tables now. Isn't that cool? Giant tables. Um, continuing with uh, Plone 6 documentation, um, we also realized that building the docs in Plone 6 was painful. Now we have the ability to do local builds uh, with a simple command, make HTML. You're done. Um, we also added a, a live reload. So as you make changes to your documentation, you can preview them. Uh, we have a link checker. So that makes sure that any link that exists in your documentation is still alive and it hasn't died. Uh, we can also exclude links that um, require authorization uh, or authentication and uh, make sure that they don't uh, cause an error. So it's one of our checks now in our CI CD um, uh, GitHub workflow. We have spell check. It's not very good right now because you know we're just starting to enforce it and there's way more technical terms in there that needed to be added to the dictionary. Uh, we also have the standard Sphinx lanes of glossary, index, sitemap, um, and we've added uh, the copy button, which is great for copying code. Um, and uh, we added some more features that I'll show you here uh, right now um, that are that are really neat. Um, so in our Plone documentation. Uh, we improved our searching. So if I wanted to find things about Volto, we have a nice list of search results. So you have control now of clicking, control clicking or command clicking and opening up uh, the documentation for that page. Terms are highlighted. Uh, you can also narrow your search to a specific uh, section such as front end. And if I were to do back end, I'd probably find no Volto results. Oh, there's one. <laughs> so uh, I really, again, this was all Katya. She was amazing in getting this to function. Um, so we have really nice search and we're looking into some other things, but we'll get to that later. Um, we now also have automatic deployments, which is great. So whenever we merge a pull request into the uh, main branch, we uh, <clears throat> we now um, build all the docs and deploy them, so they're there in real time. And uh, what else did we do? Oh, another thing that we have is this wonderful um, tool called Netlify. Netlify has this ability to um, allow you to preview pull requests of your deployment. So rather than building your docs locally, you can just go ahead and preview a deployment of a pull request. And yes, let's, let's try that again. Didn't like it. 
ignore. There we go. And you can see here's the URL, and this is a preview of a pull request that's currently open and is under review. That's really cool. Uh, and you can see that in this PR number 1204, the PR is there, and you can actually click that same link from the pull request to preview the documentation at that current state. That's super cool. This saves so much time. Uh, you know, now, now when we're doing a uh, review of pull requests, we can just click that link and go and not have to build the docs ourselves. We don't have to check out that branch and pull it down and, you know, disrupt our workflow. We can multitask with this automatic deploy preview. Um, what else is new? So, <laughs> uh, oh, the live reload. So um, we have some builds uh, in our live reload. So if I go back to the home page and I go back to PyCharm, I can uncomment this, save it, and it starts to build. And hands-free, it should reload in just a second. Come on, you can do it. There we go. We now have that being live reloaded. I don't have to reload the documentation uh, manually. That's just amazing. Uh, there's other builds in there. We can do link check and spell check, but um, I'll let you play around with these tools. Um, what else did we do? So, um, oh, we have started, we have reorganized the documentation. You'll see it's very simple. There's just currently, four um, sections that are content as well as contributing. So we've broken it down into front end, the REST API, the back end, and classic UI. Uh, and we clearly need to uh, add, update the classic UI as well as the back end. There's not a lot of content here, and we need some help. So uh, that's where we need a lot of help coming in. Um, finally, underneath contributing, we have a really clear guide of how to contribute, how to build documentation, uh, and make sure that it has good quality. Uh, and uh, we provide guides of how to write missed syntax and how to do things uh, without having to dig through it. Um, and so what are our next steps? With um, our upcoming efforts, we are focusing on um, filling in the blanks. And right now, those the areas where we have the most blanks are underneath the back end. We have the structure and layout how we want, but now we need to uh, fill in a lot of blanks. Uh, the only one that isn't really blank is this, the Plone API. Uh, which is awesome uh, because I just I just am so excited about this. Let's see if I can find one that has content. Uh, oh, that's right. I haven't fixed this yet. Um, no, no, it's REST API. Sorry. <laughs> so under REST API, this was one of the cool things that you could do. Uh, We have the ability to integrate with uh, various um, HTTP with various calls. So if you're using various tools, you just can easily grab one and copy it and paste it into your tool to get the uh, request generated and use that to get a response. Phew. All right. So with that, um, we now have imported. One of the things that made this possible, and I really have to give credit to Tiberio uh, Ichim, I don't know how to pronounce your name, sorry for mangling it, but he um, had the brilliance of using Git sub modules and really hammering us with using make files to build documentation. Uh, with that, we were able to establish how to import the Volto documentation, which is front end, and <clears throat> then uh, from there, we were able to import REST API, 
as well as in the back end, we are able to import Plone API documentation. And we can do this for any other, any other project that's underneath the Plone umbrella. Do you want to have your documentation part of this? Well, let's talk about it. And uh, we can do that. Um, with that, I think I've pretty much covered everything I want to cover. Um, but I do want to say how you can contact us. Um, you can always reach us in Discord. Uh, there's a documentation uh, channel for that. So over in our Discord, that is uh, documentation, and you can always drive by and say hello. Uh, we're always there, and we're always friendly. We have uh, the, our contribute guide. So how do you contribute to Plone documentation? Well, you just go there. Actually, let me get that into the <laughs> live preview. Um, you can go there and start playing around with it. And then finally, uh, follow us in, um, in the community forum. Uh, underneath the uh, documentation topic, it's a great, if you can, just follow the Plone documentation topic and you'll get regular updates about what we're doing. Uh, we current, I've been posting maybe once or twice a month with updates and uh, telling you everything that we've done and what's coming up next. And, uh, where we're going. Uh, and we'll soon have another update. Uh, it's been about two or three weeks, so that'll be coming soon. So with that, I do. Uh, that's the end of my presentation, and I hope you enjoy the rest of World Plone Day. Uh, again, we really need some help with uh, getting content migrated from uh, old documentation and getting it updated. Uh, this, uh, I'm really excited about where Plone 6 is going. It's um, Finally, it's finally a grown up project, it feels. And uh, it feels like it's be going to be approachable for people who, you know, want to do the things they want to do uh, in a relatively simple and um, clone ish way. So uh, thanks again. And uh, I'll see you in the uh, on the on the online forums.